Okay, so welcome to this video in which we are going to discuss uh, nitric oxide synthase inhibitors. So, NOS inhibitors, basically. Now, NOS inhibitors are often referred to as NOSies, uh, because you just take the NOS for nitric oxide synthase, add on the I for inhibitors, and then you get NOSies. So, that's an expression that you may well see sometimes. Um, referring to NOS inhibitors. Right, now, um, just a quick reminder of what uh, NOS enzymes are doing, uh, because uh, this will become important. Remember, they are synthesizing nitric oxide, and the original molecule on which they are working is L-arginine. So this is the substrate for the whole enzyme, basically. Uh, so let me just draw out the structure of L-arginine, because it is going to be important in understanding how these NOS inhibitors work, because uh, most of the NOS inhibitors that are known are just pretty much analogues of L-arginine, i.e. they have almost identical structures to L-arginine, and the enzyme mistakes them for L-arginine, the L-arginine, well, the, sorry, the NOS inhibitor goes into the active site of the enzyme and then blocks that enzyme from functioning. So here is the structure of L-arginine. Here's the generic amino acid structure. Here's uh, these free methylene groups. And then you have this nitrogen here, and then a carbon bonded to an amino group up here, and then this guanadino nitrogen here, with a hydrogen off. So remember, this is called the guanadino nitrogen. Guanadino nitrogen. And basically, this is the nitrogen that will end up uh, within uh, the nitric oxide after the enzyme has finished with the L-arginine. And it turns L-arginine into L-citrulline in the process um, of creating nitric oxide. Okay, right. So now what we want to see is um, Let's have a look at these NOS inhibitors then. So the first one I want to talk about is one which is completely unselective for the three different types of NOS enzymes. So actually, I should have just mentioned that quickly. Remember that there are these three types of NOS enzyme. NOS1, NOS2, and NOS3. So here's NOS1, NOS2, NOS3. And the old names for NOS1, NOS2, NOS3 where NOS1 was called N-NOS, standing for neuronal NOS. NOS2 was called I-NOS, standing for inducible NOS. And NOS3 was um, entitled E-NOS, standing for endothelial NOS. Okay? Now, these names are slightly misleading because they are, it's not that simple. Their distribution is not that simple. Although you do find NOS1 in neurons, it's expressed in all other, loads of other places. And again, in, although you do find ENOS in the endothelial cells, it's again expressed in many other places. And again, with INOS, you can find it constitutively expressed as well as being induced in uh, inflammatory cells such as macrophages. Okay. But those uh, names are still helpful because uh, ENOS, um, you do find a lot of it in neurons, and ENOS is the main one in endothelial cells. Uh, so although these are the proper names, those names are still very pervasive. So we're going to look for uh, selective inhibitors for all of these. But this first inhibitor I'm going to show you is basically a non-selective inhibitor and will inhibit all of them. Now the first inhibitor I'm going to talk about is a compound which is often abbreviated to LNMMA. Okay, so LNMMA, right, and this stands for NG, which remember stands for this guanadino nitrogen, and then uh, monomethyl, monomethyl L arginine. Okay, so when they um, when they take this um, when they get these initials this L N M M A they took the L and they put that out the front and then they took the N from N G and then M M from monomethyl and then the A from arginine so that's how they get L N M M A 
Now, basically, this is almost identical to L-arginine. So let me just draw its structure here. Okay, so again, here's the general amino acid um, structure, the generic amino acid structure on which all amino acids are based. And then here's this R group, and the R group is nearly identical to the R group for L-arginine. So here are these three methylene groups here. Okay, uh, then we have this nitrogen here, bound to a single hydrogen off here. Then we have a carbon, okay, and we have um, a nitrogen here, and a hydrogen here, and then we have a carb, a methyl group off of, oh sorry, not off that, no, no, NG monomethyl, sorry, I'm making mistakes here. That's the amino group, and uh, then you have a methyl group coming off the NG, the guanadino nitrogen. So you have the guanadino nitrogen here, and then you have a methyl group coming off that guanadino nitrogen. Okay, so that is LNMA. Uh, sorry, LNMMA. Uh, so NG monomethyl L arginine. So it basically just has a methyl group off this uh, guanadino nitrogen rather than a hydrogen. And I do apologize for that, drawing the methyl group off the other amino group. Right, so you can see that this is almost identical structure to L-arginine, but it will not undergo the same reaction as L-arginine. So it will go into the active site of the NOS enzymes, and it will block the uh, L-arginine from being able to get in there. So it inhibits NOS1, NOS2, and NOS3, and it's not particularly selective for either any of them, basically. Okay, right, so that's the first one. The next one I want to talk about is one known as L-nitroarginine, uh, okay? So uh, this used to be known as L-noarge for uh, nitroarginine, so N-O uh, for the nitro and then arge for arginine. Now, for some reason, it's been renamed L-N-A for L-nitroarginine. Now, that's a bit of an odd name because LNA for a very long time has stood for L-noradrenaline. Now LNA stands for L-nitroarginine. So this is now L-nitroarginine. Okay. So let me show, show you the structure of L-nitroarginine. So I'll need to firstly just tell you about the nitro group in chemistry. So if you have a nitro group of something, what this means is you have a nitrogen atom here bound to something. Then off this nitrogen, you attach an oxygen, which is double bound to it. And now remember, this nitrogen will then have a lone pair of electrons. Well, what you do is you get another oxygen atom here. Now, this oxygen atom will have, um, it will have six outer shell electrons. And it needs to get two more because it wants eight electrons in its outer shell. What it's going to do is it's going to come and sit here, like so, and it's going to use those two electrons that the nitrogen has as its own. So effectively, what happens is you form a single bond between this oxygen and the nitrogen, where effectively what has happened is the nitrogen has given one of its electrons to the oxygen, and now they're forming a covalent bond. So the oxygen uses that electron that the nitrogen's given it to put into a covalent bond, and then uh, each of them has the correct number of electrons in its outer shell, um, because in this covalent bond they'll be sharing them effectively, like so. And now, but one of them has is now almost owned by the oxygen, even though it should be owned by the nitrogen. What that means is you give the nitrogen a positive charge and this oxygen a negative charge because the nitrogen effectively donates one of its lone pair, one of the members of its lone pair to the oxygen, and then they use each other to make a covalent bond with. So effectively, the nitro group has this structure. It has a double bond to an oxygen, a single bond to an oxygen, and then the nitrogen has a positive charge, the oxygen has a negative charge there. So the nitrogen has donated one of its electrons to the oxygen, and then they formed a covalent bond. Okay, so that's the uh, nitro group in chemistry. 
Okay, so we are now going to add this nitro group onto arginine to create uh, L nitro arginine or L no arch or L N A. Okay, so the structure of this molecule then now. Uh, let's begin by drawing out the structure of uh, the, well, the typical amino acid structure. So here's our carboxylic acid group down here off our alpha carbon. Here's another hydrogen off there. And now uh, let's draw the R group for this. So you have these free methylene groups here off this, um, off this amino acid core structure. And then again, you have this nitrogen here, so it's got almost identical structure to the normal arginine, as you should suspect it would have. But then, off this amino group here, what you then stick is one of these nitro groups. Okay, so you're going to stick a nitro group off this amino group at the end of um, arginine. Okay, And then here's the guanadino nitrogen here. So... This is again a very similar structure to uh, the normal uh, L-arginine. All we've done is taken one of the hydrogens off this amino group over here. So let me show you the structure of the normal arginine again. So you've gone to this amino group here, you've taken one of the hydrogens off, and instead you've stuck on one of these nitro groups here, hence making it L-nitroarginine or L-no-arge, or L-N-A. And again, it's a very um, potent uh, blocker of um, NOS enzymes uh, because it will go into the active site just like a normal L-arginine, but it won't undergo the reaction, so it's effectively going to be a competitive inhibitor of the enzyme. Okay, now, this, ends, this, um, this L-nitroarginine it's pretty unselective. However, it does have slight selectivity for NOS3. So it will inhibit all three, really, but there is slight selectivity. So I'll put slight selectivity for NOS3 or, or ENOS, so the, uh, the NOS uh, isoform that's in the endothelial cells in high amounts. Right, okay, so that's l nitroarginine or l no arch uh, so uh, we'll uh, cut this video here and we'll continue our discussion of pharmacological ways of blocking the uh, NOS enzymes in the next video.